In this video, we're going to show you how we made our stunning Hades and Persephone AI short film using Vidu's incredible new Q1 model. You can watch the full short film here and then come back so you can see exactly how we made it so you can make your own AI masterpiece. Let's go. Hades and Persephone is something I've been wanting to make for a long time, almost two decades now. It's part of our Olympus series, where each episode is designed to be a beautifully narrated story from Greek mythology. This particular story inspired countless fables, fairy tales, books, shows, and movies, most notably Beauty and the Beast. So we wanted to give this classic myth its due with a beautiful cinematic update, and we thought it would be the perfect story to test the limits of what's possible with AI filmmaking. Since the concept of Olympus is that the entire thing is narrated, we wrote a new script that took the classic story of Hades and Persephone and updated it, making sure it felt both epic and beautiful, but still timeless. Next, it was time to develop the look. For the look, we wanted to create a high contrast black and white aesthetic to call back feelings of classic Greek mythology films from the earlier days of cinema, while also modernizing it a bit to create more stunning visuals so that every single frame of the short film was captivating to look at. We took references from everything including God of War, Blood of Zeus, 300, Immortals, Dante's Inferno, Troy, and classic black and white Greek mythology films to create a look that felt both awe-inspiring and intense. Once we had the look nailed down, it was time to start generating images. For this short film, we used image to video as the only type of video generation technique, which meant we had to create all of our keyframe images first. These images would then be animated in Vidu AI to create the final shots. To generate the images, we use Midjourney. First, make sure to set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. This will generate the images in a widescreen format perfect for film. Then it's time to start developing your prompts. Here's an example prompt we used for this film. Every project is different and will need entirely different prompts, so a good way to start is to figure out what elements define your style and add those in. The terms at the beginning of the prompt will carry more weight than the terms at the end, so make sure you add the most important aspects of your style in first. We knew we wanted the look to be dark and cinematic, so we started with that. If you're doing a film, we typically always suggest using the term film still in your prompt. This helps ensure the images generated look like they could actually be moments from a film and that your character's poses, the subject matter, and the composition all reflect that. Next, we added the subject of our shot because that's a crucial element. You can be as specific or as vague as you want, but being too specific can often cause difficulties or conflicts when generating the image, or can limit the kind of results you can get. Lastly, we added the term black and white, because that's the aesthetic we wanted to ensure we created with this high contrast black and white look. Once you have a prompt, start generating. The more you generate, the more great keyframe images you're gonna have to work with to make shots from. To create new shots, just change out things like the subject in your prompt while keeping much of the prompt the same. This will ensure you get as consistent a style as possible across shots. If you get an image close to what you want, there are two things you can try. First, you can just click very strong or very subtle. These will generate new variations of that image. Or secondly, you can actually click on the editor to edit that specific image. We had to do that on this shot because even though Persephone looked great, the character in the foreground was not Hades. We just highlighted the area where his face and beard would be, typed in a new prompt to generate Hades in the foreground with his signature long beard, and then pressed generate until we had a shot that worked. Once you have all your images generated, it's time to start generating videos. To generate all the videos in Hades and Persephone, we use Vidu AI and their incredible new Q1 update. If you've never used Vidu, this new version really blew our minds. The level we were able to achieve with this was insane. Everything from the consistency to the camera movement is unlike anything we've ever seen before, and it allowed us to create a project beyond everything else out there. Just go to vidu.com and sign up. We used image to video for this entire project, so just select image to video and choose Q1 from the dropdown to use their newest model. Then upload your first keyframe image you want to generate a shot from. You can also add text if you want to assist the generation, but we found that adding nothing typically gets the best results. If you do add text to go with it, just keep it very simple and then press generate. Just like with image generation, the more you generate, the more excellent shots you're going to have to work with in your final project. We did the same process with all our keyframes until we had all the shots we needed to make the finished film. Then it was time for narration. The narration for this project was everything. It needed to create a sense of gravitas while still feeling like a classic epic myth that was being told. We used 11 laps to create the narration, so first we had to find the perfect voice. After a bit of searching, we decided on Julian, a voice that felt one part David Winham from 300 and one part Anthony Hopkins as Odin from Thor. Once we had the voice selected, we pasted in the script, adjusted the sliders to what we wanted, and pressed generate. 
Once it's done generating, it will automatically start playing it back for you to preview. If it's just how you like it, just hit download and that audio will be ready to be used in your project. If you want to hear it another way, just hit generate again or tweak the sliders a bit before rerunning it. If the narrator still isn't reading it quite how you'd like it, Eleven Labs has a key that you can use to help you give more specific directions about how certain lines should be read. We'll link that in the description of the YouTube video. We had it generate our script until we got the perfect take that had great pacing and the right level of intensity. But even if you don't get a perfect take, you can adjust spacing in your edit later, which we did to get excellent pacing. You can also combine the best parts of two or more different generations in your edit. Next, it was time to start editing the whole thing together. In our editing timeline, we laid down the narration first to serve as a sort of skeleton for the whole project that we would then build upon. For this type of project, you should be able to close your eyes, listen to the entire narration play, and be entertained by that alone. Once we had that, we started adding our video generations in the key places they needed to go until they were all in place. Sometimes you'll notice that you need a different shot or another shot altogether. Just go back through the same steps, generate your keyframe image, Bring that into VDU and generate your video, then drop that into your editing timeline. Once we had in all our clips, it was time to add music. We used a few tracks from our Octave Cinematic Music Libraries that you can get in the Film Crux store. We also added sound design from our Singularity Cinematic Sound Effects Libraries throughout the project to bring it to another level and make it more cinematic. Finally, we created the Olympus titles for the series in Adobe After Effects and dropped that in at the end of the project. We also wanted to create a stunning scene that got people's attention at the end of the film, so for this we did a combination of different techniques to get this incredible shot. First, we generated the keyframe image in mid-journey of a woman falling in an infinite black abyss. We then took that into VDU and generated a video clip from it. Once we had the perfect one, we brought it into our timeline in Adobe Premiere Pro. We wanted the shot to feel more dramatic, so we created a new solid black layer by making a new color mat, choosing black as the color, and then putting this on a layer beneath our clip. We then went to the transform settings for the clip, shrunk it down, and rotated it to the angle that looked the most dramatic as she was falling. We then went to the beginning of the clip and used the position to move her towards the top of the screen, set a keyframe, went to the end of the clip, and then moved her towards the bottom of the screen and set another keyframe on the position to create the effect of falling. This final shot is probably our favorite in the entire film. Once our entire project was edited, the only thing left to do was export it. Hades, god of the underworld and ruler of one third of the universe alongside his brothers Poseidon and Zeus. Hades was so feared that during sacrifices to him, mortals dare not look. Although all men would eventually make it their final home for Hades, the underworld was a lonely place. You see, no one was quick to make friends with the Lord of Darkness, and so Hades' life was one without companionship, one without love. One day, while Hades was watching events transpire on Earth, by chance, he laid eyes upon the most beautiful creature he'd ever seen, a woman, Persephone. Persephone was the daughter of the goddess Demeter, master of the harvest and the weather itself. Demeter believed no man was good enough for her daughter's hand, and so she did her best to hide her away from all but the eyes of Helios. But Hades too could see beyond Demeter's shroud, and so he vowed that Persephone would be his. You can see the full short film at the end of this video, and if you want to try Video Q1 to make your own AI masterpiece, just click the link in the description, and we'll see you in the next one.